Hey, you mentioned like some of the bands you like in the past, man. Who, who, who are you some of still have some favorites? And, you know, oh yeah, you yeah. Know, I mean, kind of music we listen to. Well, just oh, recently, uh, me and uh, our monitor engineer Joel, we went to see Wilco in Central Park. All right, yeah. that's one of uh, that's one of my big favorites. Because they're, they're an example of a band that's like have have good songs that you know come across on a record really well, and also they translate just as easily live. They're straight live band, good studio albums. Uh, the most recent record I bought was Spice's new album. I'm a big fan of hers. It's more of the recent stuff. I really like my morning jacket. Oh yeah, you heard their new album. Yeah. 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 Um, Matt Ward. Okay. That record they did the most with Connor Rovers. Oh right, yeah. yeah. Um, this is cool. That was really uh, it's really good that record last year. What about like some new up and coming? You get, obviously you guys get to go to a lot of festivals like this and you get to see a lot of different acts hmm. occasionally. I mean, does any, anybody stick out that's kind of a new fresh face? Fresh face. Hmm. Like I'm looking forward to seeing Brent Bennett this year. Yeah, I seen him at uh, it was either Walker Rooster or Harvest Fest, and uh, he's cool. I like him. He's doing a different thing. I, mean, I think he's more of like a songwriter thing, you know. It's like, but it's high energy. He's great. I actually really like him. Uh, and we got to see uh, Danger Muffin. You ever have you yeah. seen them? Yeah, yeah. they open for us. They're cool. Yeah, I like what they're doing. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 funny that we're here at the Street Investors Festival doing this interview, but that question actually of uh, of all the guys that are doing the more acoustic thing, the Dusters are one of my one of my more favorite groups that are doing that. You know, they all acoustic thing. Oh yeah, a lot of good bands doing it. I mean, from Yonder to Green Sky to the Dusters, some other ones. I really like what the Dusters are doing. Are you surprised about Jesse's announcement this week? About yeah, band? that was a that was a big discussion. <laughs> was it? With us this weekend traveling. Yeah, yeah. It was like yeah, it was kind of like timing. Or something. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't even know what to do. Yeah, yeah. That, it's a shame. I, I actually did get to see them earlier this year when they played the State Theater. I had to record it. Some of the new live yeah. albums coming out. Yeah, I spoke to we, they. The Jesters did some shows with us. I think it was in Montana. There's one evening. We were all hanging out at the bar afterwards. I, I just spoke to Jesse for a long time. He's one of the guys I got to know a little more. Yeah, I really like him. All of them. I, I just think they, I think they're, they're just having. They're, they're walking that line of the traditional sound, but with more, you know, more modern twist to it. That's what I really like about them. The energy's fresh. The songs, when I hear their songs, it's like. It sounds it sounds kind of like this. Not you know, the the best the best bands I feel like are the ones where you listen to it and you can you can hear influences, but you're not quite sure what they're like. That could be so and that sounds kind of like so and so, but not really. But maybe they listen to them. I don't know. Yeah. You know, like, well, it's like the Goys last night. Yeah. I thought does that sounds like a replacement somewhere yeah. in there, but they're doing, like an out this way or. Doing you know other stuff, so yeah, I definitely. Yeah. But up and coming, it's it's hard to say, you know, because it's like we're, we're in and out so many times. There's there's so many other things going on when you travel. Oh, it's hard to like you hear. There's plenty of times you hear something. And you're like, oh, that's cool. And then, you know, the next weekend goes, and you hear other stuff. And it's just hard to hard to really remember. Really. But you guys get to play with a lot of. Legends, I'm going to play with the Flesh, and you know, some of Del Curry, and yeah. people like that. I mean, is there somebody really, you know, if you had the choice to go and say, I'd love to do a jam with them, or maybe to record something, have you ever, ever thought about that? Somebody huh. Yeah, I mean, it's funny, because you're right, you, you do end up doing the things that you want to do by accident. Like, Warren Haynes invited us to sit in at Del Fest. Like, I was like, you know, we got an email for going, Warren Haynes wants you to sit on his, I was like, you kidding me? <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things that happens randomly, you know, I think that's when, yeah, we, we were doing our late night set at Del Fest, and it's like, yeah, someone's, someone's coming up to the side of the stage going, hey, Del, Del wants to play with you guys, like, really? And I was like, I, I listen to a, I listen to um, a lot of different music, 
my, I mean, I got my degree in jazz, but grew up listening to jam bands, you know, kind of done a whole bunch of stuff, and, and admittedly, bluegrass has been like a very small portion uh, of, uh, of my listen, which you wouldn't tell from, you know, some of the bands I've been So you expect me to know all this stuff about bluegrass, and I'm like, you know, I mean, Give me to a jazz jam session, you know, I can play about 300 tunes of bluegrass and about a dozen. I, I just admit that because I kind of ended up with this quite accidentally, but what I was trying to get to is that the first bluegrass record I ever bought was Del McCurry's Wonder, uh, Wonder Where You Are Tonight. Uh, I think that's the name of it. Anyways, rolling in my sweet baby's arms, that was, you know, everyone knows, you know, that was on there. And we're still, we're still seeing it on stage playing it with him. You know, and late night, it was just one of those moments where you're like, surreal. You're like, how did this happen? You know, like, uh, I was jamming after this record like 10 years ago. Yeah, you know, right. like, <laughs> there he is. Yeah, yeah, here I am. There he is. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. it just happens kind of spontaneously. But other groups that we should play with, you know, I, I think uh, we've had some talk about doing some things with Humphreys McGee. And I like that pairing for us just because it's different. Uh -huh. Just because it's not the expected. Yeah, it's like the progressive, yeah. progressive rock. Almost. Yeah, and I, I think they're doing some really good things. Yeah. Yeah. Their uh, they're, they're level of their show is just way up there. Oh, yeah. They're a fantastic band. We, like, that's one thing we try to do within Railroad Earth. When we talk about groups we're going to pair with, we, we really like to try to focus on doing things that aren't just the obvious pairing. Like our West Coast show last year, uh, Two Bob Cruz, who's here today. They, they did a lot of the loops, and that was really cool. It's just like so different than what we're doing. And you mentioned your jazz background, and I, uh, a couple weeks ago, I got jazz to see Cornmeal, and I was talking to Chris, and I talked about that from Cornmeal, and it's definitely sounding like almost like a Jean Luc Pony kind of a fiddle, and you know, it's like almost cutting over to that jazz fusion, yeah. you know, kind of thing. And, yeah. They, they, they do a lot of that. They, there's, and like, Cornmeal is one of those bands, for example, you know, they're like, they're monster players. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't know, having to keep the energy up all night like that. They're yeah. just like, man, yeah. they go, they go so hard. Yeah. And, um, and I really like that about them. And, but that's one of the things I'm talking about where, like, they sound, I think they sound very similar to us in a lot of ways. And we do shows with them. And I think it's fun for, we have a lot of fans, as they did, are big mutual fans. Oh, sure, you know? sure. So it's kind of like a treat for those people when we do those pairings. But it's nice sure. when we do the stuff that's like, our our, our, our attitude, or our, our goal, I should say, when we select certain, certain other openers is to expose our fans to something different. It's more like, and I hope, that's why it's good to explain it in an interview, because I hope people and people will understand that because I feel like sometimes people will just, you know, go, who's this? You know, well, why, why is this band opening up? Right. You know, sometimes that's why, if they're very different. It's because we're hoping to make it more about when you come to a railroad or show, the things that we're going to associate with, the stuff that we're going to be more about the whole experience. Right. Like, here's, here, come check out something new, you know, in, you know, in addition to what we're doing. Yeah, just giving them not the same old, yeah. the same old yeah. show. You want to and, and like bands like Cornmeal and Green Sky or, and Duster certainly aren't bad, but we have so many mutual bands. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Green Sky is another band that you know I got the chance to see them at All Good, and of course they, they did the, the side stage there where they were doing like, you know, classic rock songs yeah. where they would just remake them. And yeah. I love when bands do that. Yeah. And I know you guys have done that too past of taking some songs, some songs like Fisherman's Blues, which I love, yeah. I know you break that out once in a while. Yeah. What, what is the thought process in terms of when you do covers? I mean, is it just like somebody has, you know, I really love this song and I want to just, uh, I'd like to try to remake it? Yeah, that's mostly it. And one thing that, that Road Earth, uh, I think they do that's a little different than that is too, is that I feel like sometimes, it, I mean, they, they pick covers that if you didn't know them already, you almost think they wrote them, which is, which is good. Like it, it fits so well, you know. It's not like sometimes, yeah. You know, 
for lack of a better word, you know, word in the jam band world, sometimes the covers are almost tongue in cheek, which is fun, like for the audience. You know, like, you get you get bands, you know, a bluegrass band doing a rap tune or something. It's 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 funny and it's tongue in cheek, but railroad earth. I feel like they end up shooting covers that are a little more um, consistent to their sound, or or they make them <laughs> like their sound. Which I think is cool. I mean, that's, that's just that's that's answer your question. That's, their, that's not the process. That it never comes up like, hey, let's do a disco cover or let's do a rock cover. It's always like this is do this fits. fits. Yeah, like, and it usually is some like tune someone likes and wants to do, and that's why it sounds like something because it's not like. Let's do this because it would be funny, you know. Yeah. And not that other bands are doing stuff just because it's funny. I mean, right. the, the range of influences in this scene are are, are, are that wide. Right. Oh yeah. Sure. But, uh, but I mean, like bands like the Water Boys. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't know about them, really, I mean, you guys yeah. kind of cover something like that. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Like Robert Earl Keen. You know, we do that uh, for love. Like that, that are just a little, little more of the path. But it's also a function of like having covers helps you add material and things. You know, it's the scene people want, like when you change up your sets and mm-hmm. have, have every show have something different, so it helps you oh, for sure. have, have more material. Have good things to add. Any surprises tonight, do you think? Or? Well, we always try to have something. <laughs> So yeah. usually those ideas get vetted out when it comes set list time. You know, we'll talk about it. We'll get together at the bus a couple hours before and talk about some things that we can do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hopefully. Well, I know you got the, the big uh, Halloween show coming up in uh, is it California. You doing that in California? Yeah. And then, well, where's the New Year's this year? Denver. 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 Yeah, Ogden. Yeah. It was it went so well last year. Yeah. We will get it. Go this year. Yeah, fan base is huge out in Colorado yeah. now. Right? Yeah, and Dead, New Year's was so fun. It was so fun this last year. Yeah. You know, three nights there, it's a, it's a great venue. And, uh, so. well, what about the New Year? I mean, I don't know, maybe it's too far out, but I mean, you know, where are you going to be going back over to Europe or anything like that? Do you know? Or? Uh, not, we don't have plans to go overseas right now, but that's what I was talking about in some of the earlier questions was it. That's where we have dates booked in the early part of the year that we're going to announce. But also, we're trying to we're trying to plan time, time to start working on some material. You know, we also there's also talk about doing another live album. You know, kind of like Elko, a, a proper multi-tracked thing that would have some new material on it. Or something. So those those uh, those ideas are the discussion phase at this point more, you know, we're just starting to get the first half of next year scheduled out.